Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Recently, I was browsing the Vintage Retro Computer Swap Meet Facebook group. It's a dangerous place to be for a retro enthusiast. And I noticed that John Story had some CD-ROM drives and floppy drives for sale. So I ordered a few, and you can see the stack of them here. We have two very nice three and a half inch floppy drives, a Packard Bell Frog Design CD-ROM and a Creative CDRW. Here you can see the Creative CDRW a little bit closer up, and I'll go ahead and do a close up on the label if you wanna see that as well. It's an RW1210E. Here's the other drive, the Packard Bell drive, and it is a light-on drive. And here's the information for that, an LTN262. Also the floppy drive models, we have a Panasonic drive, and we also have this nice Samsung drive that you can see here. We'll start out by tearing into that light-on drive, which as I mentioned is a Packard Bell drive, and we're going to remove the rails off of these. This particular drive is actually dead, but it has a lot of good parts we can use for other things. So these particular rails would be used in a system like this, which you saw in a recent video of mine. And as I pop out the optical drive, you can see the rails on the side. So it's nice to have a second set for this particular machine. Now the CD-ROM itself, since it is dead, we could in theory take the faceplate off and pop it onto an LTN262 drive, but I'm not paying this price, so we'll keep our eyes out. But let's go ahead and pop off the front cover there and the drive slot cover so that we can have this available for use on another machine. So I popped out those couple of plastic sliders there and a couple of pops and then we can pop off the front part there. And now we have these components for future use. And here you can see everything we salvaged off the drive, that front cover and faceplate, and the two drive rails. Perfect. So let's go ahead and get to testing. I'll use my beloved Pentium MMX233 system that you see here. And we'll go ahead and get that optical drive nice and situated. No sense in testing the Packard Bell drive, but we will test the creative drive. So we can hook in power as well as the data cable. And then from there, we can also hook in the floppy drive. So I'll disconnect the floppy drive from the system and I'll put an adapter in to make it easy to put that five volt power in and we'll connect up the signal cable as well. Perfect. So from here, we can go ahead and power on and see everything power up. I have everything nice and set up with the drive on top for the optical and the floppy drive on the left. And the system boots up and detects that creative CD-ROM drive, that's great. From there, I went ahead and booted DOS from a floppy disk just to prove that the floppy drive does indeed work. And we can see the CD-ROM also did get detected, so that's good as well. So we'll start out by doing a little format on that floppy disk. So let's go ahead and do that and load the system onto it so it can boot with the operating system, which I did test, though I don't show in this video. And then from there, let's have a look at the optical. So going to drive D, we can do a DIR listing and see that files are there. Let's create a temp directory on drive C and we can copy the files over there. So this creative drive seems to be working very well from a read perspective. Great. We can also launch this nice GCW DOS game CD that I have. And from there, we can see that things are working. So indeed the drive can run programs. Great. So since this is a burner, I thought I would load DOS CD Roast Beta 3 onto the system and see if we can burn a disk in MS-DOS. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually create an ISO file using the make ISO batch file. We can specify the source drive letter from where we want to load files. I'll give a volume label of ISO and call the ISO itself my ISO.ISO. Let's grab the MS-DOS directory and it will write this to an ISO image. How cool is that? Creating an ISO image in MS-DOS. From there, we actually need to modify a couple of files before we actually do the writing. The first one being add ASPI.bat to add an ASPI.sys driver to startup, and also the Dell ASPI.bat to add a driver to delete the ASPI driver from memory whenever we're done using it. From there, we also need to modify ISO to CD.bat so that we can take the system out of test mode and actually burn a CD. So with that complete, we're ready to run the ISO to CD batch file. And I chose the ISO image that we created earlier. From there, the drive will eject the tray and we can put a blank CD in ready to burn. From there, we can press enter here to begin burning at 12X, which is the drive speed. Perfect. I did speed this portion up, but the drive does write and the disc does finalize. And then from there, we're all set. How cool is that we just burned a CD in MS-DOS? 
So from there, we can go explore and make sure that things are the way we expect them to be. Going to drive D, we can do a directory listing, and we will see that we get files back. We can also create a temp directory on drive C just to make sure that files will copy off of this CD, and indeed they do. Great. So with that complete, I went ahead and tested the second floppy drive and it tested out just fine. All good to go there. So with testing complete, I actually wanted to swap out the floppy drive on this machine because it tends to stick. So we'll go ahead and remove the cage there as you see me doing, and I'll go ahead and unscrew the floppy drive up top there. So we can get that all set to go and out, and I'll pop another drive in there once we get that all sorts of unscrewed there, just four screws to pop it out. You can see the side of the cage there. We'll put the new drive in and I'll secure it. And then from there, back in the system, booting up, and we can see that things are working. So I think with that, it's time to get everything all buttoned up. So I'll put the cover up and I will say that this indeed was a success. Good to go. Thanks for watching.